Today, I'm going to break down the complex topic for beginners on what concentrated liquidity is in decentralized finance. Let's hop into it. First thing I want to mention is banks, institutions, centralized exchanges, and other large investors have been using a concept very similar to concentrated liquidity for the past few decades, and that's called market making. When you go into a centralized exchange like Coinbase, KuCoin, Binance, or anything like that, you're going to see something that looks very similar to an order book. Or in Coinbase's example, Coinbase is going to trade directly with you and sell you their Bitcoin and their Ethereum and their other assets. But even then, they do have an order book implemented into their system. Now, here's exactly how an order book works. There's going to be a buyer and there's going to be a seller. And then the order book is going to find buyers and sellers that are super close to each other in terms of price and execute a trade between them. But the thing is, if there's a buyer, there has to be a seller in order for that buy order to go through. Well, if there's a seller, there also has to be a buyer in order for that sell order to go through. So obviously in markets where there's not a ton of trading volume, this order book model is not going to work because there's not a ton of trading volume. So on decentralized exchanges, there's a completely new concept called automated market making which is where concentrated liquidity and normal liquidity providing comes into play. If we deep dive into this order book, you can see specific prices in US dollar. All of them are at different prices. Now for concentrated liquidity, you need to think about it like this. For the buyers, the seller is willing to sell at any given price. And then for the sellers, the buyer is willing to buy at any given price. That's the basis of how automated market makers and liquidity pools work. So if we go over to the largest decentralized exchange called Uniswap, we would put in what we want to trade and what we want to trade it for. So for example, I might want to sell some of my Ethereum. I might want to sell, let's just say 100 Ethereum. As you can see, it's going to sell my 100 Ethereum into USDC right here. And the thing is, this is not matching me up with a buyer that wants to buy it at this specific price, but rather just routing me through something called a pool of liquidity. And I'm paying a small fee here to the liquidity provider. But ultimately, this pool of liquidity is what allows trade to constantly happen. And if I wanted to do vice versa and sell, let's just say 300,000 USDC into Ethereum, which basically is buying Ethereum, you could see it's going to do the same exact thing. There's no seller of Ethereum that wants to sell Ethereum at this specific price, but rather it's through an automated market maker system that allows this trade to happen. So if we dive in a little bit deeper, we're going to have three different parties right here. Number one is going to be the trader. Number two is going to be the liquidity provider. And then number three is actually going to be the liquidity pool, which technically isn't a party, but rather a smart contract that automatically execute these trades. Now, the basis is in order for this trader to trade, there has to be liquidity in the smart contract. So that means the liquidity provider needs to put liquidity into the smart contract. Now, why exactly would a liquidity provider put liquidity in the smart contract? Well, that's because they want to earn trading fees and they want to earn the fees that traders are paying. Rather than Coinbase earning the fee or KuCoin or Binance or any other large institution earning the fee, the liquidity provider, retail users like you and me can earn the fee. So let's use the same assets we were using earlier. Let's just say the liquidity provider puts up Ethereum and USDC in this liquidity pool. Well, then essentially, this smart contract is now filled with Ethereum and USDC. On the other end of things, if the trader wants to, let's just say, sell Ethereum for USDC, they're putting Ethereum into the liquidity pool and they're taking USDC out of the liquidity pool. Ultimately, what this is going to do is adjust the price of the liquidity pool or of the underlying assets. So that's going to say, okay, well, now we have more Ethereum in the pool and we have less USDC. So the price of Ethereum in respect to USDC is going to go down, which means it's going to take less USDC to equal one Ethereum. Now, if it was vice versa, it's going to say, hey, the price of USDC in respect to Ethereum is going to go down. But if we put that vice versa and just use it in simple terms, the price of Ethereum is going to go up because the trader is buying Ethereum. So that's the basis of normal liquidity providing. Let's talk about concentrated liquidity providing, because when we get into concentrated liquidity providing, we can now select a price range for our different crypto cryptocurrency assets. So in Ethereum to USDC as a liquidity provider, instead of putting up say $0 to infinity dollars, so that way I'm providing liquidity across the board for every single possible price point for Ethereum and USDC, I can select a range. And by selecting that range, that's essentially choosing the prices that my liquidity is going to be used at. So as a liquidity provider, I essentially have this number line right here, which represents $0 to infinity dollars. And within this number line, we have something called a range. And ultimately, my range could be something like $1,500 to $3,000. So down here, let's just say it's $1,500. And over here, let's just say it's $3,000. And let's assume current price of Ethereum is roughly right here in the middle at, 
let's just say 2,250 bucks. Essentially, this right here is the range that my liquidity is being used at. At the price of $1,500, I am no longer gonna have any Ethereum in my concentrated liquidity pool. Over here, I'm gonna have 100% of my money in USDC. Even if I provide, say, 500 bucks of Ethereum and 500 bucks of USDC, over here, I will have 100% USDC. And it's not gonna be a total of $1,000 because remember, we have exposure to the underlying assets and Ethereum has declined. So over at the price of 1500 all of my capital is going to be converted into ethereum and it's not just going to be instantly converted at the price of 1500 it's going to be slowly converted as the price creeps down to that 1500 mark and when i say 100 percent ethereum we're probably going to be putting up about 50 percent of our money in ethereum and about 50 percent of our money in usdc obviously that ratio is going to depend on the range that we use but ultimately if we start with 500 bucks of each asset as the price moves down obviously we're losing a little bit of money because we do have exposure to ethereum an underlying asset that is falling in value but ultimately we're also getting more and more exposure to it because we're being sold into it because of how the traders are trading now on the other end of things at the price of three thousand dollars the top of our range well we're gonna have a hundred percent usdc which ultimately means that all of our ethereum is going to be sold into usdc as the price moves up to three thousand dollars now ultimately i want to show you how much money you could be making from different concentrated liquidity pools and normal liquidity pools so first things first let's just use the example of ethereum to usdc on Uniswap, which is the largest decentralized exchange. And I want to go ahead and mention that this tool that I'm using is called Builder Metrics. This is our 100% free to use tool where you can calculate different returns for concentrated liquidity pools. So if we check this box that says full range, that essentially means that we are providing normal liquidity and we are not concentrating our liquidity. So we talked about that number line where we have a zero to infinity dollar. Well, essentially we're providing liquidity zero to infinity dollars. Over here, you can see our yearly APR is 3.24%. So if we provide a thousand bucks of liquidity, making about nine cents per day. If we even increase that to $100,000, we're making roughly $9 per day. Not too good whatsoever. However, the second that we start to concentrate our liquidity, let's just say we use that range of 1,500 to 3,000. Even here, we're earning 20% APR. That's not too bad at all. That's a drastic change between our 3.24% and our 20.44%. This is the benefit of having roughly 6.3x leverage, but the cool thing is we don't have to borrow any money. There are no liquidations. The only trade-off is impermanent loss comes faster, and we're not gonna talk too much about impermanent loss in this video. But essentially, impermanent loss represents when we have 100% of our money in one asset and 100% of our money in the other asset at the ends of our ranges, basically, and how our assets are shifted along each other now obviously if we tighten up this range let's say we did two thousand dollars to like twenty three hundred dollars you can see we're getting a 95 percent apr and if we bring this two thousand dollars up to like let's just say twenty two 25 we're getting 393 percent apr but the thing is i do not recommend this range and the reason why is because you're going to instantly go out of range and have a ton of impermanent loss there's honestly a science behind crafting the perfect range for concentrated liquidity pools and that's exactly why we launched a uniswap v3 mini course it's only 35 dollars to get access and this is a new year special and this mini course goes over an hour and a half content related to uniswap v3 and concentrated liquidity as a whole but the cool thing is these same exact principles can be applied to trader joe another decent decentralized exchange with a $40 million TVL, or even Orca, which is a decentralized exchange on the Solana network that has been picking up steam the past couple months. Additionally, we're going to be hosting a private Uniswap V3 masterclass sometime in 2024. As you can see, already 172 people have taken advantage of this sale, joined up on the Uniswap V3 mini course, and started generating passive income through Uniswap. And then, of course, we do provide you with an opportunity to work directly with us. We have a five-phase roadmap that we help clients implement into their portfolio to earn passive income. And as you can see, already 50 of those people have taken the next step to take advantage of the opportunity to work directly with ourselves. People like Alex have made $35,000 in the month of December alone just from fees, not even asset appreciation. People like Chad are making roughly 0.6 to 0.8% per day, which is roughly 280% APR. And people like EK have already made a 15% return on investment overall this month so far. So if you guys do want to take the leap into the Uniswap V3 mini course, make sure to check the link out down below in the description. But going a little bit further, I do want to go over some basic strategy because I'm currently running a concentrated liquidity pool with roughly $15,000 in it on Uniswap V3. As you can see, my unclaimed fees in the past month has been roughly $720, which in my opinion is really nice. But the thing is, we're no longer using dollar value when we're looking at this pool. And the reason why is because we're looking at Matic paired with wrapped Bitcoin. With Ethereum to USDC, we can look at how many dollars it takes to equal one Ethereum because one USDC equals one dollar and one USDC is always the same. But when we have two assets that we're pairing together that are both 
free floating assets that can go up and can go down that's where things start to get tricky in this pool we're essentially looking at how many matic it takes to equal one wrap bitcoin so with my range being roughly 40,000 to 60,000 matic per wrap bitcoin we're saying hey at the very min price 40,000 Matic equals one rat Bitcoin. Or that can mean one rat Bitcoin is worth 80K and one Matic is worth 50 cents. Or that can mean one rat Bitcoin is worth $80,000 and one Matic is worth roughly $2. Because when you put it in perspective, when you do 80,000 divided by $2, per Matic token, remember that? That's equal to 40,000 Matic, that equals one wrap Bitcoin. So that's the basis of how we determine prices in this pool, but we can no longer use basic technical analysis like support and resistance, supply and demand zones when we are choosing our range for these pools because people aren't really trading the chart of wrap Bitcoin per Matic. So with this pool, you can see I have roughly 16% of my money in Matic and roughly 85% of my money in wrap Bitcoin. The cool thing is I actually put up about the opposite ratio. I put up about 80% of my money in Matic and 20% in wrap Bitcoin and it's completely flipped. So that means it's about time to rebalance my pool because I need to bring down this top range and bring down this bottom range. So that way I can start with more Matic and allow more room for Matic to outperform wrap Bitcoin. So for my next range, I'm probably not gonna bring it down to something like this. I'm probably gonna do 55,000 on the top mainly because we haven't really been up to the 55,000 mark since December 20th and it's now December 31st. So that's nearly two weeks right there and then I'll bring my min price down to something like 25,000 that will rebalance my pool to a new ratio where I'm putting up roughly 65% Matic and 35% wrap Bitcoin that way I ultimately have more exposure to Matic in the long term because I do think Matic is going to outperform wrap Bitcoin but when we put the fees in perspective so far this pool has been doing roughly 45% APR and this is a relatively blue chip pool I also have a pool over on Orca where I have roughly $9,500 in this render to soul pool and it's currently doing 180% APR which ultimately means that it's carrying my portfolio when you bounce together the $9,500 I have in render to soul on Orca and then of course the 15,000 I have in Matic to wrap Bitcoin it brings my overall portfolio to roughly 80% APR which I am perfectly happy with so remember if you guys are looking to explore this space a little bit further I recommend you check out our concentrated liquidity course you try to open up your first position and if you guys like what you see and you're ready for us to help you build out a portfolio make sure to click the book a call link right here in the mini course and we'll be happy to explore the opportunity of working with you I will say we are application only we only take 10 people on board every single month so spots do fill up relatively fast if you guys enjoyed drop a like subscribe notifications turned on i'll see you guys in the next video peace out